Gee, I'm not a capologist, so I can't, you know, tell you what percentage you have to allocate to each player, but I'm just well, going by what what it seems like in my head, paying a guard north of $15 million a year sounds expensive. Well, because if, if you're going to play, what are you going to have to pay Glasgow? Yeah, you're, you're getting to the point here where you're spent, you've got a lot of money allocated to offensive linemen. And with Penny Sewell's contract pending here soon, that's a ton of money to put into the offensive yeah. line. I know we all love them. Well, but here's the other thing. And, and I'm still, I, I under this scenario, I'd still pay Daniil Hunter. But I'm absolutely somebody who believes in building it through the trenches. And it, if you have an offensive line, if you've invested in that, you can get away with so much. You I'm, can get I'm, away with having an average quarterback. And I don't think Jared Goff's average, by the way. But I'm just saying... I think you could get away with having an average quarterback if you had an elite offensive line. It makes your running game better. It gives you more time so the receivers can get open. It turns average receivers into good receivers, bad receivers into, you know, average receivers. I, I think there's so much that can happen if you have a great offensive Gator, line. Gator, I ain't going to lie. I'm starting to swing back towards Daniel Hunter. For that, okay, I know, I know. But I'm just saying, but that's why it's a great question. If you spent $17 million on, Daniel, on, on Jonah Jackson <laughs> and $5 million more on Graham Glasgow, Decker already makes a healthy salary, uh, salary and Penny Sewell is going to set the market for tackles. Mm -hmm. You're spending too much money on the O-line. Well, but the money's going to... But you don't think you're going to be spending money when Hutchinson's contract comes I mean, up and then you're paid in Daniil Hunter already? The cap is going up, it's going up, it's going up. Money's going to be yeah. spent, Doug. Yeah. Yeah. It, They'll be, they're, they're, they're going to spend it, and at some point they're going to have to have uh, a cap casualty discussion. I, For whatever reason, I don't know why I'm so obstinate about this. I don't think that it's going to happen this year. I don't think this is the year they're like, we can't do it because we got to... Well, Save our shekels for everybody else. It, well, They're in it, a window of opportunity to win now. Any contract, I what makes sense, okay, is to get guys on one-year contracts that aren't going to affect all the contract extensions that are going to kick in after this year. Amon Ra, Goff, et cetera. Like those, those, you can get away with them playing the final year of their contracts. Give them a huge signing bonus so they get the money up front. But the cap casualty, like you really start taking cap hits in 2025. But if you sign a free agent like a Daniil Hunter into 25 and 26, that's where you you run into the cap crunch. Um, and so if you can get players that can help on a one-year contract, that's great. All right, you brought up something that we didn't address. I apologize. And that is, I know it doesn't matter to everybody, but Minnesota ran a base 3-4, and Daniil Hunter was a linebacker in that base 3-4. Detroit runs a base 4-3. It, it's the type of thing that can have a team say the skill sets can translate or I don't want that player. 